Hi hey everybody, uh, welcome to a brief history of chemistry lecture. Uh, I decided that today we would talk a little bit about the periodic table of the elements, how it was developed, uh, and what the thought processes were that eventually brought it about. Uh, we're used to seeing the periodic table of the elements as its modern version, which is this large, complex chart with many, many, many different uh, symbols, letters, lots of information on it, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So to start demystifying this, I thought it would be fun to do a little history lesson and take a look at how great thinkers throughout the ages have uh, organized what they believe to be elemental substances. So let's get started on that now. I'd like to start by discussing a Greek philosopher. His name is Empedocles. And he's credited with being the first Western philosopher to suggest that there were four basic substances from which all other substances are created by mixing them together. And the four basic substances Empedocles chose were water, air, earth and fire. Now not long after Empedocles came a famous Greek philosopher named Plato. And Plato is generally uh, attributed with being the one who coined the term elements. Plato's student Aristotle then came along and suggested that uh, not only are there four distinct substances from which all of the substances are made but that they have a specific set of properties. Water being cold and wet, air being hot and wet, earth being cold and dry, and fire being hot and dry. So Aristotle's suggestion gives us a way to catalog these elements in something other than just a simple list. We can create a chart with hot and cold on one axis and wet and dry on the other and tabulate these substances. Now this is a far cry from the modern periodic table, but it's this method of thought that leads to what we ultimately will, uh, will see is the modern periodic table. But to do that, we're going to have to go a little bit forward in history and jump forward to 1700. Antoine Lavoisier, who is generally regarded as the, the father of modern chemistry, did his work in the 1700s. And what Antoine Lavoisier decided to do was to test this theory that Empedocles had put forward, that there were four elements and that they could be identified as air, water, earth, and fire. So the first thing Lavoisier did was postulate. If that, that material can be decomposed, then it can't possibly be an element. If he can break it down into simpler substances, then it can't be elemental. And he used this theorem to test the idea that water is a fundamental element. Now Lavoisier didn't know that water was H2O, but what he did know was that he could use a process called electrolysis to turn water into oxygen and hydrogen gases. He could then recombine the oxygen and hydrogen chemically to form water, but what he could not do was further decompose the oxygen and hydrogen. Furthermore, Lavoisier postulated that if a material can be physically separated into two distinct materials, then it's not an element. And he used this to test the notion that air was an elemental substance. Lavoisier was able to physically separate air into oxygen and nitrogen. But once separated, he could not create anything else out of the oxygen or nitrogen by separating it. So what Lavoisier had proven at this point is that water and air are not elemental substances, but that oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, in fact, are. Lavoisier and his contemporaries continued work in this vein and were able to catalog uh, approximately two dozen elements by the time uh, he, of his death in 1794. But Modern chemists don't simply report these elements as a list. We've come to a better understanding of how to organize them. And to understand how that happened, we have to jump forward by about a century. The final scientist I would like to discuss with you today is Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist working in the 1800s. What Mendeleev noted was that he, if he took some of the elements of his day and lined them up in order of increasing atomic number, that he saw a trend. He noticed that, for example, hydrogen, lithium, and sodium had similar chemical properties, while beryllium and magnesium had similar chemical properties, as did boron and aluminum, as did carbon and silicon. And the trend continued through all the elements that were known of that day. Now this is not a comprehensive list, but this is a list of some of the smaller elements which were known. The real genius in what Mendeleev decided to do was, rather than simply listing the elements in order of increasing atomic number, 
was he wrapped them like a paragraph. So instead of a straight line, we create a table. And within this table, each column contains elements which have similar chemical properties. Using this technique, Mendeleev was able not only to catalog the elements in a very meaningful way, but also to predict the existence of yet undiscovered elements, such as the noble gases. It's, it is this small slice of the periodic table that Mendeleev gave us, and scientists have been building on for several centuries since. And now we have our modern periodic table. But before we were able to get there, we had to go through the thought processes of our Western philosophers, Antoine Lavoisier, and Dmitri Mendeleev. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.